Hi, my name is Américo Cunha. I'm from Rio de Janeiro State University. First, I wish to acknowledge the organizing committee of the conference to allow me to present online. Uh, unfortunately, I could not attend in person this conference due to travel restrictions. So it's a great pleasure to have the opportunity to present even in this, that's not the best format, but uh, we can discuss uh, ideas about this work. So this work is entitled Global Sensitivity Analysis of Heat Stable Energy Harvesting Systems via Sobol Indices. It's a collaboration between myself and my student, João Pedro Nuremberg, with professors Samuel da Silva and Paulo Baroto. Uh, Internet of Things, IoT, provides a tremendous challenge for researchers and, and practical engineers in terms of how do we power a trillion of sensors by 2025. So IoT is growing up every year in a tremendous speed. And, and the predictions is that we're going to have uh, around a trillion of sensors for the most diverse tasks in, in a horizon of four years. Even if you wish to use batteries to power these devices, I believe the world production of batteries is not enough to, to attend this huge demand. But uh, suppose we restrict ourselves to a more modest uh, budget of batteries. We wanted to use just a tiny fraction of this number to, to power these devices with batteries. Even in this scenario, could be catastrophic because the, the estimations that we're going to have around 80 million of batteries uh, dying every day in, in this context. So find an alternative to batteries or design a generation of batteries which, can, which the lifespan is bigger than the sensors is mandatory for this kind of technology. Okay, so a possible solution for this challenge is given by energy harvesting, okay? And in this slide, I'm showing to you the general concept of harvesting, that's not new. We wanted to capture energy that is wasted in, in, in the environment, it can be solar, from wind, from radio frequency, temperature gradients, vibration, okay? And we stole this energy from the environment through a, a, a device called the harvester. This harvester may have a, a secondary dispositive which is used to store this energy. And finally, after some time, we may use this to power a, a certain application which demands energy, okay? So, uh, especially in, in this context here of IoT sensors, we are especially interested in vibration energy harvesting, okay? Capture this, this energy which is wasted in the environment from vibration sources. And, and, and this is particularly appealing because uh, vibration harvesting uh, may provide energy for a broad band of domains in, in terms of power, okay? It can span from a few nanowatts up to uh, dozens of watts. Okay, and all of these devices that you can see here can be in principle fitted with energy generated by, by this vibration mechanism, okay? So the classical prototype for this technology is shown here. You can see it's a, a cantilever beam, okay? It's attached to a certain vibratory base, okay? You have a primary device which vibrates and you attach a beam there so that you want to force this beam to vibrate together with the structure. And, and you have a, a transducer, which you will transform the vibration. It is going to convert the kinetic energy of vibration into electric potential that can be used to, to feed your, your electronic, okay? Uh, this is a simple and brilliant idea, but the problem with this kind of mechanism is that uh, its optimal configuration is around a resonance frequency. And when it vibrates far from the resonance, the 
the efficiency of the energy recovery process decreases a lot. So it's not a, a device that's very efficient in a plant of uh, configurations that can it can find in, 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 in its daily life use, okay? To overcome this problem, uh, in 2009, Francesco Cotoni, Elios Voca, and Luca Gamaitone uh, proposed to use nonlinearities, to explore nonlinearities in, in, in this vibratory system to increase, to, to, to increase the band of frequencies where you, you may have broadband, you, where you may have a, a, a large amount of energy available, okay? And they proposed this in a theoretical fashion and then proved it experimentally with this prototype that you can see here. Essentially, an inverted pendulum, which is driven by, by random uh, fluctuations of the environment, okay? Thermal fluctuations exciting the, the system. And you have a transduction mechanism here, which converted this kinetic energy into electrical potential. In the same year, Alper Turk and Daniel Wima introduced the same idea in engineering community, but using this system that you can see here, okay? It's essentially the same system that as you, you saw in the previous slide, but the, the direction of the, the vibratory system here is, is opposed, okay? It's not inverted anymore. You have a clamped free beam here, which is attached to, to a rigid vibratory base. Uh, in the bottom part here, you have a pair of magnets which introduce the nonlinearity in the system. These magnets uh, induce large amplitude vibrations, okay? And this beam here vibrates in consequence of inertial effect of this moving base here, which is driven by a, a, a deterministic signal. I bring your attention that the transduction mechanism here, which converts kinetic energy into electrical power uh, obeys a linear constitutive equation. But in the same year, uh, Triple and Quinn showed that in several typical configurations of operation, this is not the best model to, to represent the, the transduction mechanism. And they proposed a nonlinear transduction mechanism, okay? They, they modeled the, this piezoelectric coupling here in a nonlinear way. More recently, Wang and co-authors showed that it's crucial also consider the effects of asymmetries in this kind of system, okay? Because uh, any manufacturing process to construct this kind of dispositive will introduce imperfections in the geometry. So they represented the, these, these asymmetries and imperfections by means of a bias angle, okay, uh, which uh, changes the shape of the potential of this system, of this dynamical system. So what we are interested here, uh, we wanted to understand a little bit more the dynamics of this asymmetric harvested, okay? And why do we want to understand this more? Uh, first, to optimize, to try to optimize the, the energy recovery process. So our primary goal here is to study the effects, which the variabilities of the system parameters, geometric parameters and, and dynamic parameters of, of this, this harvester, uh, how this variability may affect the energy recovery process, okay? And we wanted to do this by means uh, of uh, a global sensitivity analysis. We're going to use statistical tools to address these dynamics, to try to extract features, non-trivial features from its behavior, okay? And mainly try to identify the most sensitive parameters regarding the, the recovering of energy. So you, you can see here the baseline model, okay? The, the, har the B-stable harvester in symmetric configuration with a linear piezoelectric law, okay? Uh, its dynamics evolve according to this pair of ordinary differential equations. You have a mechanical equation in the upper part and an electrical equation in the bottom. You may see here, here that you have a, a geometric nonlinearity here, which represents the, the large amplitude movement, which 
it accounts for the large amplitude movements caused by this pair of magnets. But uh, if we consider the, the, the constitutive equation proposed by Quinn, uh, this equation will change, this additional term will be introduced, which defines a nonlinearity for, for the, the piezoelectric law, okay, constitutive law. When we introduce the asymmetry in the system, two additional terms enter in the equation. One asymmetric term here uh, in the elastic restitution, uh, re, uh, in the elastic force, okay, this is a, corresponds to an asymmetry in the, in the potential of energy. And, and you have this additional term here, which depends on the bias angle, which take into account the gravitational effects of this inclination. What we want to study here is the average power recovered by the system. What we want to understand is how the uncertainties in these model parameters here will affect this quantity here. But before we try to explore this, I'm going to show you some animations of these dynamics. This is the baseline system, and you can see a large amplitude vibration, uh, which is caused by, by the pair of magnets. This is a very nice uh, configuration. The, the system is, is very good for energy recovery because of these large amplitude movements. Now we see that the, the introduction of the nonlinearity in the piezoelectric law here changed a little bit, but not too much the, the, the behavior, okay? But when we introduce the asymmetry, the pattern is completely different. You may see that the the, the characteristic uh, the characteristic behavior of these dynamics is very affected. Okay, and, and you, you may notice a tremendous reduction in, in the in the amount of energy that is available for recovering here. So uh, the, this effect may also be appreciated when we see these ensembles of time series here. Okay, this is for the baseline symmetric linear system. Okay, uh, when we introduce the nonlinearity in the in the piezoelectric law, you may see that this changes a little bit, but changes a lot. The the amplitudes here decrease a lot when you introduce the asymmetry. So, how can we understand better this effect of the asymmetry here for this very nonlinear system? Well, we are going to try. To, we we are going to exploit sensitivity analysis as, as we are going to use a sensitivity analysis as an exploratory tool here, okay? But not the classical local sensitivity analysis which is based on partial derivatives. We are going to use the global sensitivity analysis here which is based on variance decomposition. So essentially it's a statistical tool. We're going to explore statistics here to, to try to, to gain some insight about the behavior of this system. The quantity of interest in here is the, is the average power recovered by the harvester. So I will represent it in an in a abstract way by Y, okay? And, and its dependence with respect to the, the model parameters here will be represented by this functional relationship here. Uh, y is equal to a certain M of X, okay? And, and I'm going to randomize all the parameters of this system. I will suppose that, that they are independently identically distributed random variables, okay? With uniform, standard uniform distributions. And then I'm going to use the hofstein sobol decomposition to write this, this quantity Y as a sum of terms, a sum of independent and orthogonal terms, okay? Uh, each M here we, is a conditional average of Y uh, conditional to uh, fixing some, some parameters x, y, or a pair of parameters x, y, x, j, and so on, okay? This resembles the, the, the classical grand schmidt orthogonalization problem uh, process. So you can see here, this is the orthogonal decomposition. As the random variables here is independent, and this is orthogonal decomposition, if I compute the variance in both sides of this equation, I'm going to have a sum on the right hand side uh, of different conditional variances. So if I divide this sum of variance by the total variance, I, I obtain the so-called Sobol indices, 
where you can see here the first order Sobol indices and the second order Sobol indices. Okay, these Sobol indices, uh, they quantify the additive effect of each input in the output of the model uh, separately. And if I consider second order indices here, I'm considering the joint effect between XY and XJ. If I consider third order indices, I consider the joint effect of three parameters and so on. We're going to explore these dynamics here with first and second order indices, okay? But uh, despite these indices could be computed with uh, classical Monte Carlo algorithm, from the numerical point of view, this is an unstable algorithm for this kind of calculation. It may result in negative indices which make no sense from the physical point of view. So to avoid this numerical instability, we're going to use a, a polynomial case expansion, okay, of the of the quantity y, and with, uh, we are going to compute the 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 Sobol indices analytically uh, with add of these coefficients of the expansion, okay. So the framework of the global sensitivity analysis is resumed here. We're going to randomize the the system parameters, okay. We are going to define a certain probability distribution for the, the model parameters, which I will call the input parameters. Uh, we plug this into the surrogate model defined by the polynomial case expansion, okay? Uh, with that, we compute the coefficients of the polynomial chaos. And once we have the polynomial chaos, we can compute the Sobol index analytically and construct this kind of map, the sensitivity map that you can see here in the bottom, which show the Sobol indices as function of the amplitude of excitation. And you, you may see the sensitivity map here, okay? Uh, it's computed for the mean power for the symmetric case with linear piezoelectric conflict. And you may see here that uh, for low amplitude, uh, for low amplitude excitations, the parameter which affects more the energy recovery process by far is the excitation frequency. But as the amplitude excitation increases, the piezoelectric constant kappa started to play a, 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 a significant uh, role here, okay? Uh, this is with no asymmetry and no linearity, no non-linearity in the piezoelectric law. But when we introduce a non-linearity in the piezoelectric law, a weak non-linearity, you may see here, uh, the effect of the frequency started to, to increase. Okay, and the effect of the piezoelectric constant started to decrease. And a joint effect between the excitation amplitude and the excitation frequency started to become predominant here, okay, for, for the middle frequency, uh, middle excitation amplitudes. And finally, when we introduce an asymmetry in the system, you may see that the pattern completely changes, okay? Uh, the excitation frequency, which was predominant in the previous case, reduced drastically its, its single effect, okay? And, and a joint effect between the excitation frequency and the bias angle is started to predominate for the low and medial amplitude of, of excitations, okay? But for the high amplitudes of excitation, uh, the, the excitation frequency, there is a, a uh, uh, a competition between the, the excitation frequency and the and the uh, piezoelectric coupling effects. Okay, this table summarizes the 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 findings in this analysis. Okay, we see that the 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 damping and, and this constant here have barely no effect in the dynamics. But for for a high energy domain, high amplitude movements. The, the character, characteristic time of the electric circuit, the piezoelectric coupling, and, and, and the nonlinearity in the piezoelectric uh, plays a, a, a significant uh, role, okay? Uh, on the other side, for low and middle energy domains where the excitation amplitude is lower middle, uh, what is very important is the excitation amplitude and, and, and the bias angle, okay? 
uh, the excitation frequency plays a, a predominant uh, character uh, uh, in the whole spectrum okay, of energies for low, middle, and high amplitude of movements. Okay? Uh, to conclude, what are the findings here? The, the order of, of importance of the parameters to considering the, the energy recovery process changes a lot with the vibration regime. If he, the harvesting is vibrating in, 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 in a regular way is one pattern, if it's vibrating in a chaotic way is another pattern, okay? Uh, excitation, frequency, and, exci and amplitude, uh, the asymmetric bias angle and the piezoelectric coupling constant uh, are the most influence, influential parameters uh, they are the, the parameters which affect more the, 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 the power harvest, the, the power which is harvested, okay? Uh, if we think in how to optimize the system, his findings suggest to us that the bias angle uh, is better to optimize the, the harvester when we have a middle and low force amplitudes. On the other side, the electrical, the, the piezoelectric constant, it's better to optimize the harvester in, in, when we have high, high amplitude excitation. Uh, what's going on now? Uh, our ongoing research goes in, in the direction to complement this sensitivity analysis by propagating uncertainty into the system. See how how the 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 variability propagates to the output. And we are also conducting with Ed of Professor Paulo Varoto from USP experimental analysis. And I want to show you here to, to close this, uh, this video from, from the test rig, which was constructed to represent this system. You're going to see here a transition from a chaotic transient to a limit cycle, okay? It, you may observe that now the system is in a chaotic transient and it's, just move it to a limit cycle, okay? We're trying to, to see if these findings of the sensitivity analysis are reproduced in experimental setting, okay? So I, I wish to acknowledge the institutional support of our, our universities, the financial support of the Brazilian funding agencies that you can see here. I acknowledge a lot your attention and, and if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you.